in this edition of WUCF Artisodes. An artist whose passion shows through in every piece she creates. Art's everywhere. You take the art out of the world and you take beauty out of everything. And a muralist whose work can be quite deceptive. It's just an illusion trying to trick someone into seeing what is not really there. It's all coming up on WUCF Artisodes. Sherry Riker studied art in college, but it took her 20 years in corporate America to realize her true passion. What does art mean to me? Art gives beauty to life. I think the mindset was that I felt like I was getting a little bit older. I was in my 40s and I thought, you know what, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And I think when you are given a God-given talent, that you at least need to attempt to try it. I went to Albertson Peterson Gallery, where Judy Albertson took a look at my artwork and I said, Judy, is this artwork gonna fly? Should I quit my day job? And Judy said, go for it. And I went over to Scott Lawrence Gallery on Park Avenue. And I said, hey guys, I just want to see if you'll take my stuff. And they just looked at me like I had three heads. And I said, that's not how it goes. And I said, yeah, but Judy Albertson just told me that I, should, that I could maybe work at it. They said, oh, okay. And they took my artwork and they said, boy, this is good. And they, they put it all in the gallery and they sold it in a month. And that's actually how I got started. When I'm looking for painting a picture of a face, I'm not really looking for anything. You kind of paint from inside and it just kind of comes out. And every face, although they're different, they're not based on any one person or anybody that I look at because they don't look like anybody. I've got pictures that has couples, a man and a woman together, and their faces kind of, they blend together. It's more an inner thing. It's more of how I feel about family and love and friendship, which I think are the most important things in the world. One of the cool things that I'm really proud of, I have a whole series of paintings that are angels based on people who have died and left us with words of wisdom to live by, and the words live on through the artwork. Those are due to a friend of mine who died from a brain tumor, and they read a poem at his funeral, and so I started this series. The paintings that I did, I donated a portion to the American Brain Tumor Society. Now I work with kids beating cancer, and I teach the children how to paint. Do they pay me for that? No. Payment is when you look at those kids, and you give them a canvas and some paint, and their faces light up and they forget about their pain and the terrible things that they've gone through. That, to me, says it all. I was a published artist for many years. You've probably seen the martini pictures with the three olives in them and the different wine things, and my art's been used on products. Being chosen to sell through Sotheby's was huge. It got me listed in Mayer's International Auction Record, which is the kind of like the Bible for art collectors. It was such a, a boost to my ego, but then you also have to remember that I'm not the best artist in the world by a long shot. I just, from all of my years in corporate America, I marketed my art, and I'm not afraid to let go of it and I don't take forever to create it so that I have to have exorbitant prices on it. You take the art out of the world and you take beauty out of everything. You don't even see it anymore. It's just, it's in your mind because you walk through a store, art's everywhere. You're always looking at it. As part of WUCF's American Graduate Initiative, Artisodes proudly honors our Student Artist of the Week as we bring awareness to the dropout crisis and encourage Central Florida's children to succeed.
My name is Kenneth Rodriguez. I go to University High School Orlando, and I love art. When I was a little kid, I looked up to my brother. He draws too. He was my inspiration. But when you start, you think you don't know how to draw. That's when the process of learning comes, and you need to have patience. I started trying different medias. I really like pen, like graphite, and I like realism. When I draw a realistic person, like a portrait, or just flowers, I like flowers, so I try to combine things that I like in one drawing. Last year he came and he was a transfer. He had a lot of patience, he, was, he actually saw a lot of detail and everything. He was very mature, very patient, and very focused on his goals for his future. It's kind of rare to see that in a high school age, because during that time they're still wondering what they want to do, where they're going to go. He already had that goal set on when he made that happen. Most of the time it doesn't come, come out like how I imagined it. And so I just have to keep trying to do it like how I see it. He pushed as far as experimenting, he pushed as far as patience and learning, and he pushed as far as researching how to do it correctly. So showing that is showing that he's very mature for his age. I mean, that's gonna carry him very far. I wanna be a graphic artist and then go pursue video games or tattoos. I found this website that, that you can sell prints. I was drawing, but I wanted to make something out of it. I started selling them online, and I do commissions too. It's, it's an advantage to start now. Artisodes congratulates Kenneth Rodriguez of University High School, our Student Artist of the Week. From the stunning houses he designed during his days as an architect to the free-flowing watercolors he now creates as a full-time painter, Harry Wirth finds inspiration in the ever-changing landscape outside his window. There's a lot of space in my work. There's a lot of white paper. I mean, every one of my paintings has something to do with landscape. It has something to do with the connection between sky and earth. So, so if you look at my artwork, if you look at my architecture, if you look at the way I live, there, there's an aesthetic revolving around my whole lifestyle. It's all about simplicity. I, I would call myself a born-again artist. My name is Harry Worth. I'm a retired professor of art and design, and I'm currently an artist and an architect. Uh, I taught in an art and design school. I taught at two universities, actually four, five different colleges. And see, teaching the principles of art make one, it, it changes a person. So there was this artist inside me all of this time, but th that egg was never cracked until just recently. Teaching concept to students and teaching creativity, that all grew inside my mind and my soul, and, it, and it's now being born. Uh, later in life. So, so I'm actually younger now as an artist than, than I was before in, in, in being able to do the, the work that I'm creating. What inspires my watercolors are things right here, this landscape. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is I walk to the south window of my, uh, of my bedroom and I look out on the landscape and, it, and it's just different. Every single day, uh, every single year, it's never the same. The landscape's constantly changing because of the trees, the leaves, the growth, and, it, it, and it's just fantastic. So, so I get these glimpses, I get these little snapshots that I keep in my memory. And um, when I go to my paintings, a lot of those come out, a lot of those uh, uh, are born again. As I'm putting paint and ink on the paper, these little glimpses, these little snapshots that I have in the back of my mind end up becoming reality. The ones I'm doing now are, are what I call a, the, the title of it is Imaginary Spaces. So not necessarily a landscape, but a space, a, a, an outdoor space. Looking out this window, you see frames. You, you see what I call a dynamic landscape. Each one of these are little frames of artwork. Each one of these is a changing little artwork as we look from this one to this one to this one. So that, that inspired me to a different 
way of painting, what I call windows paintings. The way I start is I just start and, and I'll just pick up a color and I'll, I'll basically throw that color down with some water and, and, and I'll start working with what's happening there. And I may have a, a, an idea of a, of a certain contrast that I'll want or maybe a certain amount of space but uh, it'll evolve as I'm going with it. Watercolor, it, it's, it's what we call a spontaneous medium. It captures a lot of energy very, very quickly and, and you have to work fast because it's, it's so transparent. It, there's a direct connection between my, the art that I'm doing now and, and, and my, the house that I live in, which, which is kind of the culmination of my architectural ideas. The house is an extension of the, of the landscape. So we have a prairie landscape out here, which we, we encourage to grow. In fact, my wife Kathy planted prairie grasses. And then we have what's called a savanna, a woods savanna. And I wanted the house to grow in the middle of the savanna, these 100 mature oak trees. So the house is basically a, a tree trunk that's growing out of the ground and, and is part of the trees. I'm really interested in space. So when you think about what I'm doing here, this is all an illusion. This is all fantasy because all I'm doing is I'm staining paper. And people say, well, why don't you fill up that whole canvas? Well, you don't have to because a painting or an artwork could be more powerful with minimal uh, subject matter where, as compared to something being filled up. It gives you a relaxation point. It gives you something to compare something to. And by using space and contrast, that's how you get powerful meaning in your artwork. So some of my mo most powerful pieces are the ones with the most amount of white space around them. When I look out the window, this is a very still day today, but uh, a lot of times it's just very windy, like the prairie. And I want to capture some of that energy of the wind in the paintings. So this one, I, I think I'll just let sit overnight and I'll probably start another one. Art can be created in a matter of minutes or an hour or, or maybe a day with what I do here. Architecture, my house for example, or when I design a space for somebody, it, we're talking years of time. It's completely different, it's completely contrary to the way I used to work for, for over 30 years. Because as an architect, everything had to be planned and precise and extremely serious. And what I did is I just, about four years ago, I threw that whole thing away to, to where I sit down now and I relax and I just let it flow. It just, it just, I can shake it out of my sleeve, uh, so to speak. I, I just really feel that, that my spirit's just, just flowing through my hands out on the paper. And I'm not as controlled as I used to be. I'm not as serious. And, and the best work is coming out now as compared to the past. Suzanne Sellers is a muralist who expresses a personal message in each of her creations, no matter how large or small. My art is unique because it comes from me. It's a personal endeavor. It's a personal way to self-express. It speaks a language that kind of overrides any social, economic, racial, educational barrier. Uh, enables you to integrate your mind, your body, and your spirit together in one activity. I'm Suzanne Elizabeth Sellers, and I'm an artist. I became interested in art from an early age. I grew up in the southeast part of Houston in a large Italian Catholic family. I can't ever remember a time when I wasn't creating something, whether it was painting, drawing, and that's just who I was. It's who I was then, it's who I am today. My own personal work, I work in acrylics, and when I do public murals, I work on large scale, uh, either using paint or tile work. A muralist is someone who um, paints on a wall, and that wall can be small, it can be interior, it can be exterior, it can be in the form of contemporary or realistic, uh, whatever you choose it to be. When I did the Chase Bank mural, it was a six month project from meeting with their, uh, their team of people. From start to finish, it took me six months. 
well, that was a parking lot, and they were going to make that into a, kind of a park setting. They thought a mural would be a very good idea there. And we decided the best thing to go in that particular area was maybe a reflection of the history of Houston. It was just a fantastic and exciting and just very, very challenging opportunity. It was wonderful. Some of my murals are uh, in a style called trompe l'oeil, which is a French term meaning trick the eye. Basically, it's a matter of just creating an illusion of uh, windows and doors and architectural facades. You really have to learn to work with just lights and darks, because that's all it is. It's just an illusion, trying to trick someone into seeing what is not really there. The tile mural I completed for the, uh, it was the Houston Fire Department. They wanted that to be tile, but it was about 60 feet by 16 foot tall, so that was a lot of tiles. And uh, it took more organizational skills than I thought I ever encompassed. Found some photos that represented that particular Denver Harbor community, worked with the fire department, and just tried to collage a series of images that represented the neighborhood as well as what the fire department did. And then it was just a process of firing about 4,000 tiles and uh, getting them up there on that wall. It is a challenge uh, artistically and just physically to complete something on that scale. When you do a mural such as the ones I completed for the Children's Assessment Center, you have to realize that you have an entirely different audience. And you have mostly children. You have mostly uh, parents who are maybe in distress or it's not a great place for them to be. And my murals were more whimsical, more colorful, uh, more images that they can relate to and make them feel comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. When I'm doing a, a small scale work, what I do is I go out and I just search for maybe an inspiration. I may put it on the computer and uh, edit it and just find the perfect way that I want to see it. Then I come to the canvas and begin to draw it out, uh, usually with charcoal, and kind of loosely block it in maybe with color. And that's when I start to fragment it. And then it slowly begins to focus and to take shape. My environment inspires my designs. I just look at everything that I see. The way the sunlight hits the trunk of a tree, or if I'm going downtown, I love the way the light may play against the buildings, or I say on a construction worker's helmet. Every artist brings something unique to their own artist because they take from their own experiences, their travels, their location, their history. As an artist, I've evolved into becoming more willing to take risk. I'm bolder, I'm brighter, I'm more confident. And I think that shows in my work. It's easy to see the influence of Jackson Pollock in his paintings. But Timothy Raines uses the technique to combine the traditional and the abstract, creating his own unique style. My interest in art has been something developed since I was a small child. I picked up a pencil and would copy whatever my dad would do as, a, as an artist and uh, just grew from there. So drawing people, drawing animals, cars, airplanes, whatever I could draw, and it developed quite a bit from there. I did do high school education for art, but I pursued a business degree instead and didn't think that art would be a career, more of just a hobby when I began. But uh, after getting a couple of degrees and realizing that uh, art was maybe more than a hobby for me, um, I started pursuing it quite a bit more and uh, developed a unique style and started developing clients and it grew from there. I've been here just short of two years. The gallery itself uh, was open just about three years ago. We do represent Timothy Raines. This began with him 
He very much is a contemporary expressionist, a colorist. Uh, he can work from abstraction to realism. He's also licensed with Major League Baseball to create their beautiful logos and his style of splatter and splash. The process that I developed um, came around um, as a uh, just happenstance. I had actually been uh, more of an illustrator um, when I was younger, uh, up through college, and did some illustration on the side. But uh, abstract was something that I appreciated but didn't quite understand. I felt like throwing paint on canvas to cover a, a wall space in my house was the way to go and um, it looked simple and accessible. After a while, someone asked me, could you do a flower in your style? And I thought, well, that's interesting. Um, I'll do that. So I had done a flower. Um, those really took off with a lot of people. And I thought, when I can make a flower, what else can I do in terms of abstract expressionism? So it went from still dropping the paint and splashing to forming images um, in that style. As I paint, I start with a layer uh, a base layer of color, usually it's just white uh, as a media to uh, absorb and change uh, each color as, as it hits. So that creates a lot of the interest in blending there. A lot of times I'll paint an image down first with a brush, so I'll have almost a fully developed painting on the more complex artworks before I even start splashing the, the paint. In my painting I use uh, acrylic. Uh, they're more fluid acrylics than the typical thing you get out of a tube and uh, a lot of what I do in terms of the color choices I make um, are based on how certain colors mix together. So I've done a lot of color sampling. Um, you know, a certain orange might not work with a certain red uh, the way I want it to. And so there's some limitations to what I uh, pursue artistically based on the, the, techni you know, the technical aspects of my uh, paints. I usually kind of separate it into six or seven primary colors so an image is um, quite a bit uh, simplified and then I use that simplified image as a basis for my uh, splash painting. On the straight abstract works, uh, when I know that I'm done is usually just a balance um, and of uh, you know, the technical execution, um, the, the color. Um, it's just a feeling I get. It's, it's, those aren't typically hard to uh, overdo uh, with paint. Uh, the images, when I, when I start to execute an image, then it's a little bit more dicey because if I put too much paint or decide I've gone too far, that, that can be too late because it's uh, all about minimalism and, and control and not getting too carried away. A lot of my inspiration does come from collectors though when they'll bring me a unique idea um, or a concept that they'd like to have executed in my style. Um, as long as they give me a lot of leeway to choose the, uh, the image, the visual, take photographs of the event um, or of the concept. Staying motivated as an artist can be a challenge, surprisingly. Um, I don't necessarily need to wait for inspiration. I think that if you do, you'll often not find it. You know, there's plenty of quotes about that. But, uh, you know, I think being able to do something just for myself um, keeps me going. That's all for this week on WUCF Artisodes. Thanks for watching. For more arts and culture, visit our website at wucftv.org slash artisodes, where you can find feature videos and more.